Uh, please have a seat. We're going to start the meeting here. I'll give you 30 seconds to sit down. All right, please join us in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Please note for the record that all council members are present. <clears throat> Okay, adoption of the agenda. Any changes, deletions, or additions? I, I'd like to make an addition um, to report out on a brief report out on the SFO roundtable and also to close in memory of past President George H.W. Bush. Okay, we'll put uh, your first item under Mayor Council Matters under item B. And closing memory of former President George H.W. Bush and also uh, longtime Brisbane resident uh, Rose Kapangapangan, who passed away in November. She was 98 years old. Okay, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda with those additions? So moved. Okay, I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have an operating agenda. Mr. Mayor? Pardon yes. me, would you like a report out from closed session before you go to oral communications? Uh, yes. <laughs> City Attorney. One, a liability claim discussed in closed session, and the council voted unanimously to deny that claim. All righty. Very good. So oral communications number one, I have three slips here. This is for any item that is not on the agenda. First one I have is Nancy Loxamana for Sam Trans update. Thank you very much. Um, I was appointed in June to the Citizen Advisory Committee of SAMTRANS, and I promised that I'd come back every couple of months and just give you a quick update. Um, some of the things that SAMTRANS is working on that are starting to show some very positive results. Um, some affect us as well as some do not, but at least I would like to make sure you're aware of them. Uh, bus uh, rapid transit on El Camino um, has been uh, being continually being monitored. Um, that's something of Sam Trans is looking to, to to increase time to get from different points on the peninsula. Um, we've established a app, app, mobile app, for people to find their bus as well as to pay. Uh, and uh, of course, here locally, um, Sam Trans got involved with the school bus situation and is now has school buses to the all the schools that our teenagers go to. Um, we're still monitoring that as a test. Um, I bring it up every meeting and um, continually mention how positive it is for the community. I also wanted you to know that we have a very strong presence for the North County. Um, John Baker from South City, who used to work here in, uh, with the city uh, manager, is on the council, as well as you know, Sonny Koya and Michelle Lewis. Um, as far as some of the things that are working going forward, which I think are very cool, um, the Flex Pacifica route, which is an inner route in the Lindemar area, they're now testing it to be a van on demand. So sort of think of it as Uber, but you can actually call up and get a van to your house and go door to door within a zoned area. So they're testing that. It's called micro transit, and I think that it makes a lot of sense for our area in the future, thinking of the ridge, people going zone to zone. So I think that's an extremely positive thing uh, for the future. Also connections, uh, Dumbarton to the East Bay and Coast Site connections. So I think that there's some really great things happening with Sam Trans. Um, as you know, Measure W, the transit measure, passed by 471 votes on a vote count of 270,000. So with that, um, we should see a lot more um, information coming through. There will be an advisory committee. One member from the CAC, the group that I'm in, will be on that committee. And that will help monitor and make sure that the funds for that measure um, are well spent. On the ballot, it was mentioned that for Brisbane, it would include the Geneva Avenue extension. Whether that comes to fruition, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's something that's very positive for our area. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, uh, next I have up is um, Irving Pineda for HIP housing. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am HIP Housing's Community Outreach Specialist. Um, as you know, HIP Housing is a nonprofit organization. We've been around since 1972, and we provide affordable housing and home sharing services. Um, I just wanted to uh, come and present our 2019 calendar. Each year we have um, a contest. Um, so our calendar is comprised of pictures that were drawn by children throughout San Mateo County. Um, we ask them to draw a picture of what their idea of home is. And um, there's also a quote from each one of the winners. Um, each winner won cash prizes for themselves but also for their schools and for example Delaney from uh, first grade in Menlo Park said home is the most important part of my life it is love warmth family books games chairs food and laughter so I just wanted to um, thank you all for your continued support and bring you some copies of our calendars which I will leave with Ingrid thank you great uh, thank you Thank you very much, Irving. Uh, next, I have up uh, Tom Heinz on uh, things. Thanks. Good evening. I'm really sick and in a lot of pain, but I had to come here tonight. Well, it looks like you'll have a merry holiday. Congratulations, you got what you wanted. Measure JJ passed. Gee, it's what the developer wanted too. Wow, what a coincidence. Wow. But don't think it was a vote for overwhelming mandate to do anything. That JJ passed by 72 votes, probably the number of city employees that were told they had to vote yes. I encountered a few while going door to door and they told me so. The fact that you outwardly and openly campaigned to pass this measure proved that this is what you wanted. The fact that you put your own money into it proves that this is what you wanted. It also proves something for me too, a belief that I've had for quite some time now. Don't trust anyone in a suit. I'll say hello to you on the street to acknowledge you as a human being, but nothing further. Apparently you think just the opposite. You don't respect anyone who is not wearing a suit. I see you as cowards, unable to stand up for the community that elected you. Cowards because you canceled the Thursday night meeting just before the Tuesday election so that nobody would have a chance to say anything more. And also, so you wouldn't have to respond to a citizen's request that you cease and desist campaigning on this measure. You turned your back on your own planning commission and gave the rest of us the finger. I've been in the school system for 10 years now and one of the biggest problems is bullying. You let the developer bully the housing agencies up and down the peninsula. Did you go to those agencies and counter? Probably not, because this is what you wanted. It's obvious. <sighs> you let the developer uh, bully the state legislature, and then you let them bully you, and then you turn around and bully us. Sick. Developer lied to them, they lied to you, and you passed those lies on to us. Shame on you. You claim you went to the legislature. How many times? And only two of you. Why didn't you all go? You could have gone in twos again and again and again. Why didn't you rent a bus so we could all go? Because this is what you wanted. Two council members is hardly any representation for something so enormous and important. <clears throat> One can only wonder what's in it for you personally. Money for kids off to college soon, perhaps? Madison Davis, Jamie warned you about losing your independence and becoming part of the gang. 
You didn't heed that advice, and you should have recused yourself from any vote on the housing on the Baylands. No. You are no. a registered real estate agent, and you stand to profit from any housing on the Baylands. No, I don't. That's a direct violation of the FPPC, and I'm reporting your fraudulent behavior. <clears throat> Karen Cunningham, you too should have recused yourself. I believe you had business relationships with the developer, and I'm reporting you also. You are wrong. Yeah, you can argue with the FPPC, not me. Thank you. I probably will. Clark Conway, now that your job of getting this pass is over, you're stepping back. Cliff? You also got what you wanted, a unanimous vote. The problem with that is when everyone thinks the same, nobody is thinking. I understand these times of profit over people, but in my own backyard, my own community, I see you as believing it's more important for some foreign invest foreign speculators to waltz in and change our long established laws established for a reason by some very wise people who are now probably rolling over in their grave. You did this just so that they could make a profit. Money that's not going to be in our community. Despicable cowards. I see you know no better than the Trump administration. Lie, lie, and more lies. Nothing but lies and campaign based on fear. <coughs> You deceived us. Shame on you. Corporate whores, all of you. Someday we'll have elected officials who represent the people, but probably not in my lifetime. Big money wins again. You not only sold us out, you sold your soul to the devil. Okay, does anybody else wish to address the council on oral communications on any item that is not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move forward. So, consent calendar. Council's pleasure. I make a motion to adopt item. Sorry. I'd make a motion to adopt item A, B, C, and D. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it brings us to new business, which is item A. I'm going to turn this over to Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Well, we aren't letting anything ruin our moment tonight, are we, Clark? <laughs> Nothing can put a damper on tonight. So without further to do, I have the pleasure of reading a proclamation for you, recognizing your year as mayor and your many years of service. And it reads, a proclamation of the City Council of the City of Brisbane recognizing Mayor W. Clark Conway for his service to the City of Brisbane 2018. Whereas W. Clark Conway served as a mayor of the City of Brisbane from December 14, 2017 to December 6, 2018, making him the longest serving council member and holding the most mayoral positions in Brisbane history to date. And Whereas, he is highly skilled at moderating meetings, keeping the council focused, ensuring everyone feels heard, and advocating on behalf of Brisbane on a regional and statewide scale, bringing his historical knowledge of Brisbane to the forefront of discussions. And whereas, during his year as mayor, he presided over numerous city council meetings, Brisbane Baylands deliberations, workshops and public events, as well as wrote monthly articles for the Brisbane Chamber Luminary Journal to better inform the public of important city issues and engagement opportunities. And whereas in his tenure as mayor, he hosted many citywide events marking important milestones. He presided over the groundbreaking ceremony for the new Brisbane Library and the community effort from individual supporters businesses and community members that made it all possible. He also presided over the ribbon cutting ceremony for the city's first fast EV charger installed at the shopping center. The third annual Veterans Day flag raising event and the city's 32nd annual Festival of Lights. And whereas he spent 
many hours working to solve issues and explore new projects for council consideration as part of his work in numerous council subcommittees, including infrastructure, utilities and franchise subcommittee, school subcommittee two by two, health and safety issue subcommittee, history subcommittee, library stakeholders group, and the liaison to the complete street safety committee. And as mayor, he was an active regional leader through his work with the Association of Bay Area Governments and the League of California Cities. And whereas, as a champion for the next generation, he was leading the work with families to integrate SAMTRAN service to and from Brisbane to the students' high schools. He also wrote advocacy letters, met with state leaders like Senator Jerry Hill to voice his opposition to state legislation, removing land use decisions from cities. Moreover, he had confidence in the city of Brisbane's ability to uphold a public decision-making process regarding the general plan amendment for the Brisbane Baylands. And now, therefore, be it resolved that after a year of dedicated and passionate service as mayor of the city of Brisbane, we thank him for his dedication in making the city of Brisbane a true community and a better place to live and thrive. If you join me in a round of applause. I'd like to take a minute and um, go around and each of us say a little something. And then I've been waiting to say this, have my turn to say this. But after, I'm going to use your line. We'll let you have your rebuttal. Okay. So, Clark, I think if anybody asked any of us sitting here, who's your, who's your mentor on the city council? All of us would say you. You are such a grounding force. You keep us on track. <laughs> you keep us calm. You keep us level-headed, just like a minute ago when you were whispering in my ear. And I personally don't know where I'd be in this journey without your advice and your guidance and your historical knowledge is so invaluable and I don't know that anyone will come after you that will will have that the way that you do um, this may be the last time that you're serving as mayor which will be a true loss to the city of Brisbane but you leave lessons with each of us that I know that we will carry and we will pass on to the next generation so thank you so much for your service and I can't wait to have a little bit more time with you. Thanks. Thank you, Madison. Well, the proclamation and Madison's kind words for Clark really sum up a lot of what Clark has done here for the city and how much dedication he truly has. Whether you agree with his views or not, he was has been such a good leader this last year that was very contentious for all of us on the City Council dealing with the Measure JJ and the Baylands issue. And I'm glad that we have the solid foundation to go forward and work with the current council. And I'm very proud that Clark is still going to be with us because as Madison said, his knowledge is, is undeniably one of the best in the city of past history and, and where we can go and how we can come together on, on issues. So I thank you so much for your help. Terry. You know, as Madison said, uh, you are a mentor, Clark. Um, and you, you You've been there for me since I started on the council, and uh, I just appreciate you know your your openness 
and your ability to be a, a really good listener and someone who, who is a deep, conscious thinker, you know, in all the, the areas that, that, that we dabble in. Um, and, and you haven't just been that with all the council colleagues over the years, but also with the, the public as well. And I think that's why, you know, so many members of the community, you know, they, they just, they have so much respect for you. Uh, because you're, they know that where you come from, it, it's from the heart, and that that you, that you care, and that you're always going to, you know, look at all sides, and and determine, you know, based upon all the information, you know, to make to make the best decision. Um, you know, as you said, Terry. I mean, this this was a really difficult year for us uh, as a council, and. And I think it was tough for the community as well. Uh, you're someone who's born and raised here at Clark, so you've seen a lot of tough fights, you know, in town. And I don't know if, if this past year was as difficult as some that you've experienced, some that your father experienced when he was on the council. Um, but we needed a strong leader. We needed someone who could help us get through this. And um, I, I couldn't imagine anybody in this community who could have stepped in and, and, and did what you did. And um, I'll be forever grateful, and, and I know that, that our community will uh, as well. So thank you for your leadership, Clark. Clark, first we were friends, and now we're co-workers, and uh, you've been a great friend for many years and your honesty and integrity as the leader of this city is beyond comment. I am so grateful that I got to work with you this last year. Yes, it was very difficult, my first year on the, plan on the city council. And yes, it was a very tough time for the entire city council this last year. And so I thank you for your strength and your honesty and integrity and how you guided us all to where we needed to go last year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. I guess I get my rebuttal now. <laughs> <laughs> Almost sounds like a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know, uh, first, you know, and I, I didn't write anything out. You know, uh, I want to speak off the top of my head here and. Um, First and foremost, I just want to thank my family for their unwavering support, you know, because uh, this was a very difficult year. You know, any any time that you're mayor, actually, uh, and I think for those who've experienced it, uh, it it's different than just being a regular city council person because you got to be attentive to everything. You set the agenda and you keep the flow of the meeting. Um, there's a lot of nuances that go on you know through this whole process and but secondly I'd really like to thank my colleagues because Measure JJ was an extremely contentious issue for the general plan amendment and it was contentious internally for us and it, it was a struggle and I know it was a struggle for the community and we Knew it was going to be a dogfight out there also, but we also knew what we were faced with. And the reality was, is what we put forth. And that, you know, we may not have been in, in agreement 100% on the, uh, the checks and balances of JJ, but when it came down to it, we made a decision of what we felt with all the circumstances and what was best for the community. I'd really like to thank staff for getting all the information this year. You know, everything that Clay and his team has done uh, always came through with, you know, expeditious uh, information when we asked for it, you know, um, and, and the community at large. Uh, thanks for being engaged because this past election, Brisbane almost had 80% of our registered voters vote. And we've never had that. We always have a pretty high turnout, 80%. Mm -hmm. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, you folks turned out and voted, and you made your voice heard. I think there were 69 people who didn't vote on JJ at all. I'm not sure if it was the ballot issue or what was going on there, but you know, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, but I'd like to give a special thanks to uh, Caroline Chung um, for your help this year, Caroline, for all the little nuances uh, that the, the mayor had gone through. And uh, I'm passing that information to Madison that your, your, uh, your help uh, just on those, those things has been invaluable this year, and I thank you for that. So um, I'm going to keep it short. So thank you, and I'm glad it's over. <laughs> And you're right. <laughs> it was it Sean Connery's or Sean Connery said, uh, I think, uh, about doing a James Bond movie, Never Again? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a result. Okay. Right. <laughs> so we're going to move on to item B, which is consider adoption of resolution number 2018-66, adopting the certification of votes, declaring measured AJ results. Um, we're not going to adopt this tonight. <clears throat> And the reason is, is that uh, we didn't receive the certification from the county, a letter. Now, on the county website, it states that the election is certified, but we haven't received the official letter as of yet, have we? No. As of 7.57 p.m.? <laughs> we haven't. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so as it stands on the county website... They say that the election is certified and that we had yes uh, 1,158 votes and no was 940 votes. So it was well over 2,000 people voted. We had 2,745 registered voters. And if you add up those numbers along with the 69 that didn't vote on JJ, that's how many voted in, in Brisbane. So. Um, so item B, we're not going to, we're not going to adopt it. We'll adopt it on January 17th at our, our first meeting of next year. Also, um, we'll be laying out what the next steps are for measure JJ. All that was approved. I'll just reiterate what we had said all previously. What measure JJ does was approve a general plan amendment. It did not approve a project of any kind. All this does is now give all the parameters of what the Baylands development can be. You know, and that's up to the developer how they want to do it. And then the process goes on, it goes on through the planning commission, goes all the way through the planning commission. Uh, there's a development agreement that has to be agreed to. The DT, Department of Toxic Substance Control, Regional Water Quality Control, Control Board, uh, County Environmental Health, they have to come up with the mitigation plans of what it's supposed to be for the whole site. <clears throat> um, what happens after that? Um, eventually, it's come back to the council. Now, might be in a year, might be two years. I don't know. You know, it all depends on how the process works out. But the community in Brisbane is always engaged, and I'm sure they will be engaged in every step of this process. And I encourage you to stay engaged, even the folks that you know want to come up and say, no, 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 I mean, that's okay. Stay engaged, you know, because that's what Brisbane's about is, is public citizenry involvement. So with that, we are now going to move on to election of new mayor and new mayor pro tem. So, council's pleasure for mayor. I'd like to make a motion to... Uh, Point Madison Davis as mayor. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other motions? I'd like to make a motion to appoint Terry O'Connell as mayor pro tem. I'll second. Okay, motion and second on that. Is that okay, uh, Mr. City Attorney? Okay. All right. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, very good. <clears throat> We're going to have a new mayor. We're going to now, I'm going to uh, give the oath of office. Madison had asked me to 
give her the oath, which uh, I, I feel very honored to do that. I've never done it. I've taken 15 of these oaths, but I've never <coughs> given one. So, so Madison. Should we go down there? I, Madison Davis, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that, I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, <coughs> foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that, it, and that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. the oath of uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I, I Terry O'Connell, do, do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. I, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservations or purpose, or purpose of evasion and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the, duties upon which I'm about to enter. the duties on which I am about to enter. Thank you. I guess now is my time to say something, right? Okay. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, I've gotten the same question a number of times. How does it feel to be mayor? And while I couldn't accurately describe the feeling, considering I only took my oath a few moments ago, I reflected on the last three years on the Brisbane City Council, and I can say with confidence that if there's one feeling that characterizes my time serving our community, it's appreciation. Appreciation for my colleagues, city staff, my family, my supporters, and most importantly, Brisbane citizens. So my first order of business is to thank you. First, to my family, I'm so blessed you chose to raise me here and for your unwavering support even when we disagree. You challenge me, you let me vent, you defend me, and there's an emotional toll you take alongside mine. 
There is no greater love than that. You constantly hear, tell your daughter this, or tell your sister this. And while you do always report back to me these comments, you'll also politely remind people that they can talk directly to me. I appreciate that. I also want to thank my extended family who are here tonight. Some flew in from Washington State and Rochester, New York to share this special moment with me. And for that, I'm so grateful. Next, I must thank my other family, my city council colleagues. I'm so proud of our ability to work together as a team. We can have strong disagreements about one issue and not let that seep into another, which keeps us functioning as a body in a productive way. I truly enjoy listening to your points of view and I'm thankful for the way we hold each other accountable. I'm looking forward to maintaining that same energy in 2019. Finally, I have to thank Brisbane citizens. I would not be here without you and will not continue to be here without you. I made a vow when elected that I would take every opinion seriously and would view my role as your representative, listening and incorporating your feedback into my decision-making process. Now as your mayor, I reiterate the same vow. I want everyone to feel welcome to attend meetings, send me an email, or give me a call. During this year, I will host regular office hours so you can have even more direct access to your city's government. I often hear how thankless a job serving on the city council must be. And nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, this is perhaps the most rewarding experience of my life. This journey has taught me the art of patience, collaboration, listening, and compassion. All skills I felt I had mastered until this. Now I know I'm only beginning to scratch the surface, but I'm working to improve every single day. I've come to understand that the joy of serving on the city council doesn't just come from thinking of an idea and then bringing it to life. Sure, that can be exciting, but the true joy comes when a citizen thanks you for bringing their idea to life. And that's what the job's all about. I live for moments like that. Thank you for entrusting me to work on your behalf. A few days ago, I took to our history books to reflect on where Brisbane has been and to gain insight into where we are going as people. The end of our most recent book discusses the Baylands. I sat with a particular paragraph. It read, here was a momentous change, thrust once more upon the city's residents to ponder. They had not asked for it, but their attitude had evolved over the years into something quite different from mere defensiveness. Environmentalism, successfully implemented and taken to heart, had given new purpose to Brisbane's traditionally feisty strength. Change had arrived, and Brisbane was at the heart of it not to resist, but to shape it in accordance with citizens' core values and their visions for a dynamic future. That sentiment seems pertinent now more than ever. With the passage of Measure JJ, we have to unify and construct a vision for the Baylands that feels as much like Brisbane as possible. While I know the last few months have been trying for many, we must put our differences aside for the sake of Brisbane's future. Your input is critical throughout the specific plan process. And I hope that this process will feel similar to that of Parkside, where the plan transformed several times due to citizen feedback, ultimately arriving that something many could get behind. 2019 promises to hold new ventures and challenges. Perhaps most exciting, the new library will be the jewel of our city, complete with a maker space, Brisbane history room, outdoor play area, and plenty of nooks and crannies for reading, our library will encourage young and old to seek information about the world around them. In addition, two newly formed committees will release their first projects in 2019. The Public Arts Committee will unveil its first piece of public art, a stunning spher spherical sculpture on the Sangamo property at Sierra Point Parkway. Shortly thereafter, the library will also showcase a work of public art consisting of glass butterflies suspended from the entryway ceiling. 
Brisbane, known for its endangered species, painted fire hydrants, Christmas time stars, and of course, San Bruno Mountain will soon add public art to the list. Equally as exciting, the historical committee is hard at work creating a film featuring interviews from longtime Brisbane residents. Preserving our oral history will ensure future generations will get a glimpse into our city's past and gain a better understanding of our unique culture. In addition, the committee is working to digitize photographs and articles so that they may be, may be easily accessible through a simple database search. The committee will create exhibits for the, new, for the library's new history room and encourage people to step back in time and connect with Brisbane's roots. This year, the council will also explore additional revenue opportunities for our city. Many of these will come in the form of new taxes that will be on the ballot during next year's election. In 2017, Brisbane decided to allow certain cannabis businesses to operate with a conditional use permit in Crocker Park. Now that these businesses have come to town, it's imperative that the city has a means to collect revenue from them by way of a cannabis tax. Likewise, the council will review a liquid storage tax for the tank farm and will also evaluate increasing the transit occupancy tax for our hotels. Last but not least, airport noise remains of utmost importance to this council. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connell, along with myself, are partnering with our citizens group and advocating on behalf of Brisbane at the SFO Roundtable. We are connecting with other cities who share similar concerns regarding noise to strategize on the best way to use our collective weight and resources to effect change that will lead to relief. As I look forward to the year ahead, I want to leave you with a quote from one of our history books that I think perfectly summarizes Brisbane and the path we will forge together this year. These two aspects of Brisbane, its willingness to fight and its strongly held vision are what make the city a special place. After 57 years of cityhood, Brisbane looks toward a future that undoubtedly holds more controversies and great change. But if the past is any indication of what is to come, the people of Brisbane will continue to face the future with their feet firmly on their ground and their eyes to the stars. I'm hopeful for a year filled with prosperity, collaboration, and most importantly, unity. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your mayor. All right, did you wanna, did you wanna say something as mayor pro tem for yourself? I don't think I could follow that up. Okay. <laughs> I, I do want to say I am looking forward to working with you this year, and I hope that your vision for unity in the community will come forward, and so. I wish you all the luck. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Okay. Ready to move on? Yeah? Okay. So... We are going to move on to staff reports. Um, Randy, do you have a report on upcoming activities? 2019 is anticipated to be a fairly busy year, Madam Mayor. So please enjoy some rest and recreation during the upcoming holiday season. That's the end of the report. Okay. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> so next on the agenda, we have Mayor Council Matters. Um, and I believe you have something you'd like to report out. Good item, Oh, wait, selection. wait. Oh, yes. We have city selection committee appointments. This is, um, it, it looks as if on the city selection reports there is no... Um, There's no... Nobody uh, who is running opposed. So. Right. As of yet. As of yet. <laughs> so I think the mayor has approval from the council to um, vote the ballot and or make a decision if there's a nomination from the floor. Second. Okay. Let's call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. So next, Terry, you're going to report out. Very brief report. I attended a SFO roundtable meeting last night. And while I can give a full report at our next meeting, uh, we did have one agenda item that is important to the city, and that is that the 
city's share of roundtable operations went back to the original dues of $1,500. They had been reduced for all cities during the economic downturn to $750, but the committee, the uh, roundtable felt that the dues needed to go back up to historical levels so they could continue to support the work at the round table. So that was agreed to unanimously and that will affect the city budget to the tune of 750 additional dollars. That's it. Okay, anybody else have anything to report out? Um, I had, a, uh, well, I attended a special um, joint session of CCAG and the San Mateo County Transit Authority in regards to um, uh, moving forward with express lanes on 101 between Redwood City and 380. Uh, the debate was in regards to whether the county would uh, retain control and hire uh, the, San Mateo, uh, the Santa Clara Transit Authority to manage it or to give the control to MTC, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission to run the whole operation. Um, doing the managed uh, toll lanes uh, would provide uh, quite a bit of money, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, million dollars uh, in revenue for the county. Um, so uh, whether or not, uh, yeah, we'll use MTC or uh, Santa Clara is yet to be determined. Okay, anybody else? No? no? Okay. Moving on, that brings us to oral communications number two. Does anybody like to say anything? Okay, seeing no hands. Um, we're going to move on to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn in honor of George H.W. Bush? And Rose, help me with the last name. Kapangapangan. Kapangapangan. Mama Rose. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.